Hello guys, how are you? After a little long time, right? Yes, I think probably after one year, this is the first video I'm going to upload. So learning Java 10 through Java 8, sound a little bit crazy, right? But I promise you, it will not going to be crazy. So why I'm going to teach Java 10 through Java 8? Okay, here's a story. I worked on a couple of projects and I worked with a couple of developers. So they use Java 8. They say, okay, hey, we are on a Java 8. Some people on Java 9, but they still write the for each loop on over collection uh, corrections, right? They still um, use traditional approach of the programming. They still use the interface and uh, uh, implementation for the interfaces, even in a single method, right? Okay, why? Because Java, I think Java did one mistake, that is Java is always backward compatible. So what the people meaning they upgraded their version, that means they just installed the Java J, new JDK and hey, yeah, we are on a new version. That is not how it's going to work, right? So if you are adapting the new version, you should change whole new set of uh, performance improvement, whole new set of method, whole new set of approaches. So. What's about the relationship between a 10 and an 8? Here's the thing, Java 1 released, which is a, obviously because the first version is a significant, right? Then Java 2.0 release. Yeah, that is also a significant version because whatever they uh, learn from the version 1 and they introduce a whole set of new framework, um, a whole set of new things on the Java 1.2. Then 1.3 release, 1.4 release, there was no much differences. But 1.5 release, here you go, it was a new milestone, right? It introduced so many new things. That is the way Cathy Sierra's book went sky high with a selling. It was a sell like a crazy. Why? Because all of the people in the world start to follow that book that because of a Java 5 came with the 1.5 came with the so many major things in the naming convention was different. Then Java 6 release, Java 7 release, no much changes. But I'm not saying there was no any changes. For example, Java 7 that came with the private resources and uh, you can use the string on the uh, switch cases. There are so many new additions, new changes. They introduce a closable interface, much things. but nothing change life with the architectural differences or anything, right? But 1.8 or otherwise Java 8 released. With Java 8, they changed so many things. They introduced so many new things. It's like a new life, new language. But most of developers wasn't serious about it. What they did, they used Java 8 in a way they code on the Java 6 or Java 7. If you go, if you take 10, uh, developers who use in Java 8, they may, you will still see they use um, uh, usual interface based programming, usual for each loop, usual for loop, so many things. So why I am going to uh, talk about the Java 8 first, then move to the Java 10, because if you don't understand the Lambda expression properly, if you don't understand the functional programming, if you don't, if you know how, if you have no idea about the functional interfaces, or if you don't know the stream API, then you will go and start to understand Java 9 and the 10 concepts. Here's the guys, I have a bad news for you because Java 11 is about to release. Why? Because Open JDK 11 is released, so Java uh, JDK 11 is about to release, right? So why? because Java changed their life uh, release cycle, right? So now Java has a two type of releases. Java has the releases and LTM releases, long time uh, maintenance releases. So do we need to update? Yes, obviously, but we are lazy. Can't help, right? Then you're in a wrong job. Okay, I can do one help. I can teach you like this. I can teach you in videos. Okay, what is the new concept? How to use it? But if you're so lazy to watch the video and understand, I'm sorry. You're in a wrong job. So you must update because here's the thing. We are doing a job. It is not like uh, we learn one and then go to the office and we can work a lifetime with the knowledge we gathered in the degree program. That is not how our life work. We have to keep update. Okay. So why Java 8 is important to learn Java 10? The reason is this. With the Java 8, they change so many things. 
Why? Because we need to evolve, right? So according to the, theor uh, the set of theories in the ev uh, evolution, what it says, if you are not evolving, you are going to, this extinct, right? You are going to die, okay? So Java scared to die, so they are evolving, okay? So uh, they introduce something called nice thing called lambda expression. People think lambda expression, okay. Uh, I asked one guy who was an in interview, what is about Java 8? Yeah, Java 8 uh, is coming to lambda expression. Yes, but Java is not the uh, only language support lambda expression. Lisp, LISP is the first language who supported lambda expression. Hereafter, there are so many languages uh, support lambda expression. So Java also on board with that. But why? Because Java has certain concept because Java is when some when we ask someone what is a Java, Java is an object oriented programming language. That is the first answer 98 people out of 100 give to me. Why? Because Java, yes, Java is a double OP language. Being a double OP language, it has so many problems as well. Why? Because the new languages which coming is come up with the functional programming, right? So, but the functional programming is, is easy, right? So you can, the code is smart, right? Code is uh, small. You don't have a lengthy code base, right? So code, smart coding, which is come with the uh, functional programming, right? There are so many more. I'm just giving a brief. But, so Java also wanted to adapt to that. Otherwise, people will le leave Java, right? So if, if you want to stay in the field, has to evolve, right? So Java introduced but still Java is a double OP programming language, but now it has functional programming behaviors, right? So you can uh, use Java, as, uh, Java, you can code in a way like a functional programming. We can, we can go into uh, deep with these things when we discuss deeply in the Lambda expression. Then Java, so far, no matter how many cores you have, dual core, quad core, octa core, no matter how many cores, even you have a 32 cores, Java can't use it unless you use special tricks, right? So why? Because Java don't know how to do it. If you give a collection, Java will use a sing single code to process the entire collection, right? Which is a slow. So now with the Java 8, they introduce a parallel programming. What it does? Ah, it can use uh, multiple cores using a parallel stream. You can get the list. For example, let's say you have a list, list dot parallel stream dot filter, then it uses a all the all the cores on of your computer, right? So see, it is the parallel programming. Not only that, Java inter, uh, with the Java uh, 1.8, it introduced so many new things, right? With the lambda expression, they came up with something called functional interfaces, right? So therefore, we need to know those in order to go to Java 9 or 10. Why? Because we can't learn those over there because that is belongs to Java 1.8. So that is why I am going to talk about 1.8 before we go to the uh, Java 10 or else Java 8. I'm sorry, a little bit confusing, not the 1.8. By the way, 1.10 Java 8 is the same. So let's say Java 8. But that's why we need to talk about Java 8 before we jump into Java 10. Okay, so long story short, what is a lambda expression? Lambda expression is a way we can avoid uh, multiple boilerplate codes. What's a boilerplate codes? Let's say you have a, a interface, then you have to have a class to implement it, then you have to have a, uh, methods to uh, use that those implemented call to the, those in implemented method, otherwise I invoke those method. With the lambda expression, you can avoid all those things, but itself it has a certain limitation, it has a certain requirement, right? So we are going to talk about all those in detail. Okay, guys, then let's meet on our next video. Here's the thing, one point, right? So usually my videos are a little bit high quality, good lighting and everything, but I need to release uh, Java 8 videos uh, more frequently because uh, we need to cover up uh, soon almost all important topic. Here's the thing, I'm not going to talk about all everything about Java 8, but I promise you, if you follow these videos, you will get all the required knowledge for go to Java 9 or Java 10. That means I'm going to cover each and every important topic. What are those? Lambda expression, functional interfaces, stream API, 
a new uh, date and time API which is comes with uh, uh, Joda date and everything I'm going to cover all the things about the Java 8 what you need to know okay so then but what I was going to tell you videos will not be quality I mean it will be same HD videos but it will not be good lighting or good setup or anything as a tech guys we don't care right we just need the context okay I'm appreciate let's go with that let's meet on the next video talk about in detail lambda expression what we are going to learn forgot to tell you you are going to miss next video why because if you didn't subscribe yet go ahead and subscribe or click this uh, and the click this the bell sign so it will uh, help you to get the notification about the video also i'll put the links uh, below and in the screen as well about my facebook pages and instagram feel free to follow and those about instagram is about photography but we can stay in touch okay see you soon